Hey there, Michael Prescott here. This is the first in a series of very short videos of me drawing little pieces of isometric dungeon dressing. And I thought I would start off with a staircase. Uh, someone asked me online when my map tutorials would begin. And I've done a couple. Uh, some of them were long, uh, some of them were short. But here I'm actually just going to focus on pieces of terrain that go in a dungeon or a castle. So what I decided, um, first thing to do is to block out the space where your stairs are actually going to be. Stairs serve a function, they get you to somewhere and from somewhere. So I've drawn a little 20 foot uh, high wall and a 30 foot long run that show that uh, the stairs are going to be 30 feet across and 20 feet tall. And then I fill in the diagonals uh, just so I know where the stairs are going to go. Now in a big dungeon you would have uh, several staircases, probably maybe dozens, uh, and just this little demo I've got none. So when I'm choosing where my stairs are going, I'm just making a little shortcut here. Um, I measured my stairs 32 millimeters long, so I'm just putting a tick mark halfway and a quarter way, uh, which, is a, which is a quick way to kind of eyeball how many stairs you want. It's not super important that they be at the exact scale of the dungeon. just enough to get the point across, but not too small that all the detail kind of blends into a mess of little black lines. So here I'm doing some freehand lines. You can see I'm using a blue pencil. Um, like the blue gridded paper, which I got from uh, Incompetech, um, they're, they're both the, more or less the same color of blue, which I can pull out with Photoshop. Uh, but whenever I freehand lines like this, I, you can see me wave my pencil out in space a little bit, and I'm following the lines of the grid just to get my hand used to drawing in that direction because there's no quicker way to spoil the illusion of a 3D object than to um, you know, do a line that doesn't follow the grid and, and uh, make it, r r sorry, remind all your viewers, all the people looking at the image, that it's just a flat piece of paper. So with the basic object blocked in, now it's time to start inking. I like to use these Faber-Castell pit pens. Uh, there's lots of things you can use. Um, the reason I like these is that they're, they're waterproof so they don't smudge, which is important if you're going back and forth across different areas of your dungeon. There's some nice uh, free-flowing pens, but they'll, uh, they'll blur all over the place if you run your hand across them even, even minutes after you've drawn the line. Here these lines draw almost immediately. So I'm just going down the outer edge of each step. And it's important to try and make the lines go to and from those diagonal rules that, that I drew, uh, just so that the, the riser and then the horizontal part uh, can to match. Now, I've done my stairs longer than they are tall. So what I'm doing now is drawing a series of little V-shapes to connect the stairs. Um, but you'll notice that one side is a little bit longer than the other. The horizontal is a little bit longer um, because obviously shallow stairs, you have wider steps than they are tall. You can get away with just drawing little V-shapes, which is uh, fine if they're very, very tiny. If they're big, it, it does pay to, again, try and line up with the isometric grid so that your stairs actually look like stairs and not just some kind of corrugated slide. This is one of the many uh, parts of drawing dungeons like this that just gets meditative. You just do the same thing over and over again, just let your hand fall into a rhythm. Now these little V-shapes tell you where the back line of the stair, the inner crease goes. So now that I've done all the outer lines. I'm going to do the inner ones just by connecting uh, the axis of each V. Now if you're doing stairs that are at a 45 degree angle, like if you had a staircase that's 20 feet uh, high and 20 feet long, these lines would go down exactly the center of each space. And in my case, I don't know if you can see this, but they don't. Um, that's because again the risers are a little shorter than, than the run of the step. but it doesn't matter too much. And now with those two last lines, the 
basic shape is done and we're on to detailing. So I was using an XS marker, the extra small. Um, what I like to do is outline all my stuff in a slightly thicker pen to kind of bring it out from the background. If there was a wall there that I had drawn, I, I may not do this step here. Uh, but anytime two pieces overlap and there's a piece, this depth between them, some distance, I'll grab a thicker marker and outline it just to help the two objects separate in your in your mind. Um, when you do this, make sure not to obliterate your steps. You can do that if you use an M, a medium marker, which I like. Um, on the other hand, if you've kind of botched some of your V's when you're doing the thicker outlining, you can actually do a bit of a repair job and kind of override what you did before. So with the outline done, I'm on to texturing. So you can see I've drawn a bunch of uh, horizontal lines for brickwork, dungeon brickwork. Uh, not a hewn dungeon, but, but I guess this was... Uh, constructed like you might see in a castle dungeon. Um, and again, the most important thing here is to make sure that your brickwork follows the lines of your isometric grid. If you are just kind of lay down some brick texture, uh, it'll flatten the whole side out and make the, the whole thing not look like a 3D object anymore. And with all that done, you can just noodle and add little bits of detail, whatever. You know, in a real dungeon, of course, this would connect to something. There'd be a landing here, or maybe a little archway at the top. But in this case, it's just some free-floating stairs to nowhere. Thanks for watching. Hope it was useful.